Indian country, which is Vastu Shastra. Astrology is about governing our personal, your well-being. It's governed by the planets. All right. So why is this science so important? They are all interconnected. Yeah. So both are important. When your astrology is good, the negative impact in the space that you occupy, whether it's a house, whether it's your um, your hostel. I had a brilliant girl from Singapore. I also remember her name, Durga. She was so intelligent. She came for my talk and she asked me, I was staying in London, in a hostel, can I follow the signs of Vastu Shastra? I said, definitely can. It's only a room, she said. I said, why not? I'll tell you how to orient it. And she orientated, she used to email me, communicate with me, and today she's in the final year completing her PhD. Brilliant girl, yeah, so I'm saying example. So there are many, many students also have come and listened this talk. I've given a talk also at the multimedia university for a big group of students there also, yeah. So preparing you for the future. So I'm going to share with you on the science of Vastu Shastra, the scientific explanation, what is Indian geomancy? or Indian science of construction and uh, the law of the universe, the flow of energy in a space. If a space is orientated according to the law of the universe, everything you undertake under the space will achieve smoothly. If the space is not right, you will continue to experience obstacles and obstacles. Then you keep on complaining. Why is that my life? I'm suffering like this. My neighbor is better. My friend, my colleague, my students, all are better off. Why am I? God is unfair. Never. Don't blame God. God created every human being to near perfection. All right? It's our past karma, we call it. Yeah? The law of the karma. What is more important is to remember our life is not meant to be a suffering. Even you have whatever challenge is personal. But remember, there's alternative ways to remedy these problems. Whether you cannot study, whether you cannot sleep, whether you cannot hold on to a relationship, whether you cannot get along to your, with your parents, or your parents having feud, jobless, childless, unmarried, whatever issues, everything there's an answer. But as students, I believe you all are very intelligent, you seek for answers. So I hope in the end of my presentation, I am expecting a lot of questions from you. But normally in this governing area of mine in the Southwest, whatever in your mind I am not going to answer you, even before you ask. That's what the governing power of the quadrant that I am occupying right now. That's how I look at this and see. Yeah? So this science again, what is Vastu is very old, like I said, more than 5,000 years old. The Chinese have called it 4,000 years old, the Chinese feng shui. The Malays, they also have the Malay version of feng shui, which is called Tajul al Muluk. But the Malays themselves, very few are practicing it. It's very popular in Negri Similan, not in other parts of the country. Still, the similarities are there between all the three sciences. Yeah, I'm not going to say which one is better and so on. But the origin is the science of the Indian one is the Vastu Shastra. So it can be applied in modern times basically to bring balance in our lives, bring grounding and then give us some hope. We all live from hope, yeah? Hope you are rich, hope you get a good job. I have a daughter like you like you. I'll tell you some story about my daughter. She always wants to use a voice as, you know, she wants to be like a celebrity. So I used to tell her, you know, based on your horoscope, like I said, you have to check, you know, I can be a lawyer. Like lawyers are vocal, but talk, talk, talk a lot. But she got no interest in law. So what is she suitable for? I also can't think. What kind of jobs that use voice? She's a singer. No way. She cannot sing. She's got no voice. So it ended up, she's going to be a radio DJ. I didn't know that. See? So, so she's going to be a radio and RTM DJ and so on. So it's same like that. It, it's, you know, you know at least you can skew towards it. So when she applied for the job, so easy. The job came, she went for three interviews, 
then automatically it comes. But you go and try something else, it will not fail. Yeah? So you try to understand the, understanding the use of astrology and also the science of uh, Vastu Shastra. Yeah? Okay, what is it based on? What's well, based on arrangement of things in the right order? All right, it's important that you know uh, elevation. Where is the raised ground, depressed area? Where is your kitchen, toilet, bathroom, main door, staircase, prayers, bedroom, study room? Everything got a space. It's just not based as you like. There are people who have come to me and have challenged me. Do I need to follow this? Up? Can I use my intelligence and do? I think positive. I never said no. no. Please carry on. Your good times, you can do anything will work. But remember, our good times and bad times are not permanent. Our life is like a cycle, like a weather. There will be up and there will be down. So remember, in the up moment, the defects in your life will not affect you. But in the down moment, that's the time you see everything collapsing. So you incorporate this knowledge so that you protect yourself from whatever obstacles. Once you are in connection with this energy, I'm talking about the cosmic energy, you will get the intuition power or telepathic power giving you messages. Go now. Don't go. Turn. Stop. That's all. Which is the most priceless gift in your life. That's all you need to know. You don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, yeah? So this guy is always very useful in our lives, yeah? So when is it required to, how do you know? I'm going to focus very, most of you, am I right? You're staying in the hostels, within the campus, some outside the campus, renting a house in a room. So that's, I'm going to focus my talk towards that space that you're occupying. So at least you understand how you can apply what I'm sharing with you. There's no need to talk about bungalows and mansion. We talk about your room and the space that you are renting. So it's important that we can orient it. I know it's not your space. You're only renting. You're only transit in the area. But still, you still can orient it. You are shifting certain things in your room or your house. And I can assure you, you can see results within 24 hours or 72 hours. I've got friends, I've got an Irish friend, I always cite a case about his life. An Irish man who only wants to follow when he's in trouble. So he came and saw me, I said, very simple, he's got no contracts, you know, he's based in Malaysia. I told him, he said, then he told Salva, you always talk about something, what is it? I said, look, how to explain to an Irish man? You don't have interest, but he said, you're having problem in the business, I tell you what to do. Just shifting the table. Facing west, I moved it to north. Within nine hours, he was hysterical. He came to me, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything. I moved the table. He got his $1.5 million contract, which has been waiting so long. Just moving the table, right direction, facing the right direction. So today, he's one of my great followers. In some of my major talks, he too attend here. Yeah? So how fast does this science work? Everybody comes for my talk, get excited, they want it to work tonight. Go back home, change here, move your table, your bed. I love to do that magic, yeah? I can't do that. Alright, it's best you know this knowledge before taking up the space. i give you an example how strict I follow. I checked into the Heritage Hotel at 12 noon today. And they gave me a room on the sixth floor. And when I went to the sixth floor, that room was facing a T junction, meaning the room is facing an uh, alley, yeah? the walkway. So I went down and said, Look, I won't stay in this room. Give me a room, alternate room. And they said, Okay, no problem. Then I moved on to the room. Because I know if I'm going to stay there, I don't think so I would have arrived here. <laughs> that was the inauspicious sign. So simple as that. So you, you can. Use the signs even for a temporary stay in a hotel. Don't talk about renting and paying a permanent home. That is more important, yeah? So how fast does it work is how many percent that you want to follow. Following 100% can be very challenging. Let me be honest because Malaysian architecture developers do not incorporate feng shui, vastu, tajul, malo. They all maximize money. 
They don't care. They build all kind of shapes, locations, and so on. But we enhance this knowledge, and before we buy or we stay or we rent, we can follow more than 50%, 70%, 80%, 90%. Definitely can. Definitely can. Yeah. And remember, when you want to observe the tips that I'm going to share with you very shortly, follow with respect and faith. No part-time. You don't want to follow, please don't follow. You can go back laughing, joke, and go back home. You know when is the best time to follow? When you have trouble in your life, remember. You only take medicine when you have a headache. When you have no headache, why do you take medicine? Same like that. The knowledge I'm going to share with you today is giving you the prescription of medicine for you to write and keep. When you have the problem, you refer to what I've said, and then you try to take them medicine. That's all. Simple as that. Right? Knowledge and tips. Yeah? So understanding the science, again, has got nothing to do with religion, or religious ritual, superstition. It's a science, pure science, found thousands of years ago by the great sages. And it doesn't work on a belief system. Whether you like it or not, we all are governed by these cosmic forces. Alright? I'll show you the examples of these cosmic forces. This is the scientific explanation of the Earth. The Earth is 12,800 kilometers in diameter. It's got energy lines running from north, south, east, west. It's a huge ball of magnet. And you've got magnetic forces governing them. Anything revolves on the Earth affects the earth, affects every human and every living thing. Today we are going through a very difficult period globally. The heat is so hot. New York today was one of the coldest in decades. The weather pattern has changed. Affects us or not, am I right? All of us are affected. Heat means affect irritability, anger, heat related diseases. Cold, too cold also affects. So anything that affects Earth will affect you. That's what I'm talking about, the cosmic energy. The Earth is tilted 23.5 to 8 degrees toward the northeast. That's why when you pick up a globe, always the globe is tilted, am I right? It's not straight, no, through north, yeah? So you tilted. So energy enters into the Earth only through the northeast. Energy, I'm referring here to sunrise. Sun rises in the east. Because of the tilt of the earth, sun energy enters into the earth only through the northeast. This morning sunrise where? East. Northeast. Depending on the first six months, where is it orientated? Yeah? Sun never rises in the south. Am I right? 5,000 years ago in the east, today morning also in the east. So the science is based on the flow of energy from the sun. So you need to know this. This is the macro picture I'm giving you, the big picture. So let's look at the micro, the miniature earth. When you talk about the miniature earth, is your house, your hostel room, or the room you are renting. And for all of us, today in the next two hours, this is our house. Let's turn this as our house. For two hours or so, you've got to check the feng shui of this place. Otherwise, you don't know how. Then you'll have all kinds of problems, yeah? So the energy, how does it flow? Sun rises in the east, energy enters to the northeast, and settles in the southwest. So, how does the energy flow in this space? You can use a compass to determine. I'm standing in the west, and the southwest is here. All right. Right opposite me is the energy comes like this and settles here, in this area. None of you are enjoying that powerful energy, but only me. This area, very, very auspicious, powerful. And it should be closed. Lucky there is no main door around here. The doors are closed, auspicious. And you can actually see those who have attended uh, lectures down here. Have you attended before? Students here, lectures, talks, and so on. You can see the lecturer, whoever, the presenter, will be fired with energy, governing energy. Sorry, mesmerizing you because of the position like this, yeah? Alright. This science is based on the five elements of ether. Ether means space, huh? Fire, water, earth, and air. 
This one does not belong to the Chinese, Indian, Malays. It belongs to every living thing. All right? So let me qualify that part. So this has got nothing to do with religion. We all are governed by these five elements in our daily lives. You say, no, no, I don't want these elements. Cannot. You cannot escape. Yeah? And these elements must be in harmony in our space that we occupy. In happiness, so that we enjoy more peace of mind. We can study. Whatever we study can absorb very fast. We can sleep better. Consume food without any problem. All this very, very important. And these five elements also govern five locations in our space that we occupy. Whether it's a rented room, hotel room, here, house, wherever. So important. So, if you like, the element of water is governed in the northeast. If you want to have a swimming pool today, in this place, is right opposite me, in the northeast, that side. You can have a swimming pool there. But our space is too small, yeah? So in your house, if you want to place a fountain and a swimming pool, is in the northeast. Fire. Fire, I refer, refer to in your house, or in any space, is where the kitchen must be located. Kitchen, eh? What you cook. That's the location. Earth is governed in the southwest, which is this area where I'm standing. Southwest, which should be the heaviest place in your space, in your house, in your room, and even in the auditorium. But today, we don't have a flat level. It's heavy on the northeast. Depressed in the southwest, southern area. Like I said, this should be heavy, not that side. So you will have obstacles in whatever you carry out. Yeah. The air corner is governed in the northwest, and the center is open to sky. Most houses, anywhere you go, the center is always left empty. Yeah. That's the weakest place in any space that you occupy, whether it's your house, your room, and you want to put things in the center. Nobody. Naturally, you don't put things in the center because of the obstacle, yeah? So do not have any kind of structure, any placement of staircase, uh, tables and chairs in the center of your space. Why is this so important? Because the five elements also comprise in our body in the form of five body senses. I'll show you. All right, the five body senses of sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Our senses correspond with the five elements. Because our senses are not connected, we are not well. Upset. Sight is sun. Hearing. We are using our ears. Yeah. Taste, touch and smell. I'll show you examples. Okay, now I'm going to give you some examples for students in particular. I tailor this for you. Try to exercise this. It's free of charge, no money involved. Try to do this, yeah? To be in harmony, to enjoy the connection with the five elements. Ether, space, early morning, when you wake up in your space, whether it's in your hostel room, your rented room, or in your house. You can share this knowledge with your parents also. Play soothing music. No love songs. No rock songs, no metal music. Whatever song, meaning. Okay, I'm talking about non-spiritual songs. Okay, first of all, Richard Clayderman, beautiful piano, saxophone, pleasant. Eh? Those who are in the area of spirituality, mantras. Yeah, devotional songs. Buddhism, the meta music. The Muslims, the nashi. Yeah, ghazal. All these are very positive songs vibrations, music, to welcome the energy of ether into your space. Once it's in space, your hearing gets connected and you're in harmony already with ether. Simple access. Every morning you're going to do. All right? Avoid disturbing sounds. I'm referring to some places, houses, your rooms also. When you open the door, is your door squeaking? Like entering a haunted house. No, no, no. You know, after sometimes you don't grease, don't wipe it. Getting some very, very inauspicious. It caused tension. Sometimes your fan, have you heard or not? Tick, tick, tick. Wow. It's very, very irritating, yeah? It can 
cause disharmony. So try to oil it, repair it, replace it, and it'll be done. Yeah? Next element is air, the organ of feel. In our space that you occupy, I'm going to again refer back to your hostel room. You see, energy flow, good and bad, is constant and every second. Early morning when you wake up, what you need to do is to flush out this negative energy. One of the exercises is to burn incense in whatever, like sandalwood, rosewood, lavender. Burn some incense. Even, I'm going to talk, no, you talk about house yet, your room. Burn some incense, just go around the entire room. Because the room is what you're paying the rent for, am I right? Not the entire house. But if you're owning the entire house, you do the entire house. Okay? So we're talking about room for students. So for those who are living in the house, also can practice. Burn around the entire room or entire house. Go on a clockwise. Alright? Spend more time in the corners of your house or your room where negative energy gets stagnated. If you're unable to concentrate, unable to study, when you come back to your room, feeling frustrated, cannot study here, or go to library, it's an indication that negative energy has governed greater than the positive energy. Try to do this flushing of this smoke incense. Let the smoke hit the ceiling, meaning the smoke must hit the ceiling. I know it'll get very uh, foggy, you know, with too much smoke, doesn't matter, just for a while. Then you can leave for your studies here. Yeah? Try to do this every day, not one month once or one year once. So try to do it every day. Okay. Next element is the element of fire, which is related to sight. We got to be in harmony with this element of fire. How do we do it? Early morning, six forty-five, when you get up, all right, go outside your room, your house, wherever. Spend some time looking at early morning sunrise, which contains vitamin D. Enhance your body connection. Some people pray to the sun, no problem. You don't want to pray, pray, or whatever you want to do. But just keep, spend some time, a few minutes, looking at the sun. And you harmonize yourself with the element of sight that is fire. Yeah? But those people who are living somewhere like in Europe, when they gave a talk in Europe, they said, You don't see the sun for three months. So what are you going to do? It is very easy. Burn a candle and gaze at a candle for five to ten minutes. It's automatically connected to the energy of fire. Yeah? Simple exercise. All right, element of water, which is taste. We need to drink adequate amount of water because our body is 70 to 80 percent is made up of water. We can live without food, but we cannot live without water. That's why when you get admitted, the doctor don't care whether you've taken your food. Most important, fix you with the drips. And you can live with the drips for weeks, no problem. Don't need to consume food. So water. So what I'm saying here is drink a lot of water. You all are big teenage and adults here. Drink a lot of water to be harmony with water. In the context of the science of Vastu Shastra, if your house got a leak, roof leaking, tank leaking, pipe leaking, it's an inauspicious sign. A sign that indicates that you're going to affect your wealth, money, unwanted expenditure. See, there's another, another sign, huge signs called omens. Interpreting dreams. Have you heard of all this? Omens, interpreting dreams, a black flag crosses your path, what does it mean? When a crow crows, what does it mean? When a lizard thinks, what does it mean? Everything there is a message. If you study the message, you know the knowledge, you become so super intelligent children, am I right? These are all messages, messages from the divine. It's nothing to do with superstition. Study it, all written in ancient times. Yeah? So if your roof is leaking, it's not a good sign. Plug the roof uh, from leaking, the pipe that is water that is dribbling, plug it, repair it. Do not ignore it, yeah? If you can practice it now, maybe not now, maybe when you're working, live, when you're staying on your own, when you're married, remember these rules of life, yeah? Finally, Earth. We all live on Earth. I always say that we're not connected to Earth energies. Example is, right now you're on parquet floor, flooring with carpet, cement, marble floor, you're wearing shoes, slippers. When did the last time you ever walk barefoot on Earth? 
maybe months, maybe years. A very good exercise in the morning. Remove all the shoes. Walk. Let your soul touch the ground. The grass. Walk just for 10, 20 minutes in the park, wherever you are. What does it do? When you walk barefoot on earth, you're connected to earth energies. Bumi, yeah? Energies of the earth. You discharge your negative energy into the ground, you're charged with positive or flushed with positive energy. Simple exercise. All the five exercises I shared with you just now is free of charge. Because it's free, nobody wants to do it. This is the truth. The divine has given all this for free. No? But some people have to pay money to go and learn, do yoga and all that exercises. Actually, it's nothing. They're all within us. Yeah? So please respect the earth. The earth has given us all these beneficial for us to be connected and for us to live in harmony, happiness and for your own good future. Right? Very quickly, how to use a compass. When I talk, a lot of things are based on directions, compass directions, yeah? So for instance, if you use a compass, you need to know the direction of your room or your house. Stand at the doorway. Just hold it and you'll know where is the north, east, south, west and so on. Don't take the compass and walk around the house. You'll get confused. Alright? If you get your direction wrong, orientation will go wrong. Do not base on sunrise because sun moves towards the northern hemisphere in the first six months and the balance six months towards the southern hemisphere. So you cannot say the sun is this side, so east, wrong, wrong. East is somewhere here then. It moves here. Yeah? So use an engineering compass, that's all. Once you know the compass, direction of your plot or your room, you divide that space by three. Meaning, if your room is, for instance, 12 feet by 10 feet, the smallest I can think of, the hostel. All right, you divide the 12 and divide the 10, and you get your nine quadrants. All right, once you know the nine quadrants, then I'll tell you where to place, where to sit, where to sleep, which place you should sit and eat. All right, room. How many of you are staying in the rooms or house? Rooms. All of you have a house. Rooms. Many of you are renting rooms, yeah? Okay, okay. So I, I talk more on rooms, okay? Better for you, yeah? For students, you run room orientation. No need to talk about that. Because you're paying for the room, so you only worry about the room. Don't worry about the house. If you're paying for the house, then you think about the entire house. Alright? So please remember that, yeah? The space that you occupy. I'm only concerned about the four walls that governs me here. I'm not worried what is outside. Because outside, I've got no control. So what is within you, yeah? So once you divide, you get the nine quadrants, and then you can know. So otherwise, if you are choosing next time a place to stay, Check where the main door, master bedroom, guest room, toilet, bathroom, all these got specific location. Alright, so that you know, once you know, you can apply. If you're doing a study, uh, I mean, to buy a bigger property, I know those who are living in Perak in particular, where land is cheap, houses are cheap, I believe. Uh, then you need to study the orientation of the place, where the roads are located, slope, elevation, quality of the soil, Angle of the tilt. Surrounding, do not buy a property close to a graveyard. Place of worship. Avoid it totally. Yeah? All other places are fine. Tips on direction. There are eight directions in the compass. North, south, east, west, north, east, south, west. Sorry, south, east, and northwest. The only direction the main door must not be located is in the southwest. So if you're buying a house after graduation, after marriage, Remember this for life. Do not have a door in the southwest. That means entering the southwest is very inauspicious. It can cost you your marriage, your health, and your finance. Yeah? Avoid it totally. All other directions are fine. Yeah? Alright, plot chains very quickly. If you're buying a house, make sure the house is located on a square or rectangle. Even renting a space. Do not go for irregular shapes like long bar, triangle shapes, flat shape, cut shape, you know, that's driveway protruding, bit fancy and all that. Avoid it totally. Yeah. Avoid the land or you know with cuts. Sometimes you find this in the corner lots. Maybe this is your family house. You can also 
reflect back when I'm talking to you, what, where is your parents staying? What kind of house they staying? If the land is cut, affects growth. Right? For instance, in the northeast. If the southwest is cut, affects health and, of course, your wealth. The prosperity corner is gone. Yeah? Uh, these are found in corner lots, those who are staying in corner lots. All corner lots will have a void, a cut. Depends where the cut. All cuts will affect or distort the flow of energy and it will affect your peace of mind, your wealth, family issues and so on. So what I'm trying to say, the energy flow is good if it's rectangle and square. Flow is even, not distorted. Irregular shapes also will affect you, yeah? Roads, roads on all four sides is quite common in Malaysia, it's fine. Roads on all three sides, roads on three sides also fine. This one is a three side with the north, uh, northwest. Two sides, your house is located in the center, east entrance, fine. This is the one you gotta avoid. A Y junction where the cars are converging, your, your house is located in the plot. Avoid buying, staying in such properties. Huh? Although it's not many, but you still have it. In Malaysia, some of the ad hoc developments or haphazard developments, you find them. This is the most common one, T-junction. This is what I meant just now, my room that was given to me in the hotel. Where the room was located there and that was the walkway. I said, no way, I'm going to stay there. I want to move away from the walkway. Give me a different room. So a house shouldn't be located in the T-junction. What are the effects? Um, Definitely, no peace of mind. High expenditure than income. Alright? Disunity in the family. Married, childless. Married, divorced, separated. Um, there is no good news. And of course, terminal illness. Those who stay in T-junction properties. Do not buy, do not stay. In my case, I always say I do not visit people who live in T-junction properties. It's that bad. No compromise. I even throw challenges for anyone staying in a T junction property and the prosper. No way. All over the world I've seen this and given people an analysis to avoid. So in future, if you're going to buy a house, anyone show you a T junction, don't even ask to go and see you. So just pass away. Go we'll find some other property. Yeah? Don't waste your time. No compromise. You cannot correct the house. People, some people change the door, move to the side. All of that doesn't work. Yeah, just skip. This is the only area of the science of Indian feng shui and, and even Chinese feng shui where there's no remedy. In Chinese, we call it the killer chi that rushing into your property affects you very badly. Yeah?